No one knows the mind of God except God himself and those whom he reveals himself to. No one is so smart philosophically in the wisdom of the world that they can give God some insights and give him instructions, give him some counsel, or or know instinctively what he thinks about things unless they are given, like we have been given, the mind of Christ. He says, but we have the mind of Christ. The expression, the mind of Christ, is one that has... um, Occasion a lot of conjecture as to its exact meaning. What does he mean, we have the mind of Christ? Well, let me put it this way. I believe that what he's saying is we have access to the mind of God through what Jesus expressed of his own mind in his teachings. In the teachings of Christ, we have his, the expression of his thoughts, of his mind, of his opinions, of his values, and so forth. His mind is accessible to us because it has been revealed to us through his having come and having spoken and so forth. Those who are the Greek philosophers and other pagans who do not follow what Jesus said do not have his thoughts, do not have his mind accessible to them. They have only their human wisdom, which cannot know the mind of God. If God doesn't reveal it, then we can't know it. But he has revealed it through Christ. Christ's mind has been expressed, and of course God's mind, which is like his, by by Christ's teaching. We, there's other more mystical ways we could understand it. We could say, well, we're the body of Christ. Jesus is the head. And therefore, the thoughts of Christ kind of filter down to us and we kind of receive them at, through direct communication from him. And I believe that's true, too, although I'm not sure if that's what Paul's saying here. Certainly what he's saying is God's revelation through Christ, whether it be in what Christ said when he was on earth or what he continues to, to direct his body in now through the Spirit, is certainly the way in which we know the mind of God as opposed to philosophical speculations uh, along the same lines. Having the mind of Christ. Now, see, there's also a place where Paul said in Philippians 2, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. But I think even there the expression is different because he goes on to talk about the need for humility and so forth, which is great. Humility is something of the mind of Christ. But I think here he's not so much talking about the attitude of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. doesn't necessarily mean we have the attitude and humility of Christ, though that's important too. In the context, I think he's talking about we have a revelation of God's own mind through Christ, who is our head, and whom we're following his thoughts, we're following his teachings, uh, we're getting our guidance from him, and therefore we are, we are at an advantage over those who would be seeking to know God's mind through speculation and philosophy and human wisdom merely, without the revelation of God's mind that is given to us in Christ. Mm-hmm.